the fourth generation Audi A3 premium small car has arrived in Australia. It's got more tech, more equipment, and a higher price. Does the package still add up? Let's go and find out. The A3 first arrived in Australia in 1997 and since then around 56,000 have been sold here. The new A3 took a long time to make it down under as COVID played merry hell with supply lines. What we're driving here is the entry level A3 35 TFSI 5 door hatch or sport back in Audi speak. It's priced close to $50,000 by the time you get it on the road and it's a direct rival for the likes of the BMW 118i and Mercedes-Benz A180. It's worth noting that deep under the skin of the Audi A3 are the same technical bones as the Volkswagen Golf and many other VW Group small cars. You are paying a premium for those four Audi rings. Externally though, there's no mistaking this car is both an A3 and an Audi. It's a very evolutionary look, just that bit sharper and more angled with a more protruding nose than before. Notable styling flourishes include the honeycomb single frame grille previously reserved for sports models and an upgrade to LED headlights. The powertrain of the Audi A3 35 TFSI is one of its most interesting elements. There's a 1.5 litre turbo petrol four cylinder engine, but it's assisted by a 48 volt mild hybrid electrification system that adds power, adds torque, and cuts fuel consumption, something we all appreciate these days. The engine drives the front wheels via a seven-speed S-Tronic dual-clutch transmission. The new gear stub means manual changes can only be made via the flappy paddles on the steering wheel. Audi has built up an enviable reputation for luxury interiors, but the A3 is not in that mould. It's more functional than fancy. Sure, it all fits together tightly and looks modern, but the trim materials are nothing special and the driver's seat is flat. It's also manually operated and doesn't have lumbar adjust. Storage options are entirely adequate. All the options are here you would expect, including decent door bins, dual cup holders and a littered bin. For this generation of A3, the touch screen has moved from on top of the dashboard into the dashboard and it's been tilted towards the driver for the first time. It also includes Google services, including this satellite map view. Audi says the new operating system that runs its infotainment is 10 times faster than before, but the microchip shortage triggered by the COVID pandemic means smartphone wireless charging isn't currently available. The new digital instrument panel is one of the technical highlights of the new A3. It's quite adjustable. You can go through various views and various information displays, including a widescreen sat-nav setup. The new Audi A3 comes with a higher safety tech spec thanks to a boost in capability of sensors like cameras and radar. However, you don't get adaptive cruise control at this spec level and some other features including rear cross traffic assist are missing because of the microchip shortage. It is a little bit tight in the rear seat of the A3, but it is a small car, so that's understandable. There are some nice touches though, like these plastic scallops that help you with knee room. Any sense of premium presented up front is gone in the rear. There is limited storage and air convents, but no USB plug-in points. Boot space is about average for a small hatchback like this. Not having a spare tyre helps with space, but not if you get a flat. There's no power assist for the tailgate, but you do get hooks and a couple of pockets split fold the rear seat and it grows to a really useful space. So far the experiences of a premium hatch that maybe isn't that premium. Let's see what the driving delivers. If your experience of Audis is luxury limos and SUVs, then you're just not gonna quite find the A3 experience quite so fulfilling. 
powertrain is more adequate than compelling. It doesn't feel that strong at low to middling throttle levels, so manipulating the S-Tronic manually helps get things going. The A3 is a neat little handler. It's a nippy size, it's great for getting around urban streets, but it's also composed enough to behave well on winding country roads. The A3's low speed ride is a bit brittle. It definitely gets better as speeds rise. Road noise is a bit of an issue in the cabin of the A3, which is surprising really. We'd expect it to be more refined. The big upside of the A3's mild hybrid powertrain is its ultra-modern stop-start function and a thrifty use of fuel. Overall, the Audi A335 Sportback TFSI is a competent drive rather than a compelling one. It's not bad, it just doesn't quite deliver what you expect from an Audi. The A3 comes with a solid warranty and servicing package, including cap price servicing. When it launched back in 1997, the original A3 was sold as Audi in a concentrate. All the good stuff, just in a smaller package. But these days, you seem to miss out on some of the ambience, as well as some of the sheet metal. To be honest, I'm struggling to come up with a logical reason why I'd spend thousands of dollars more for an Audi A3, rather than just opt for a decent, mid-spec, mainstream small car like a Mazda 3, or of course, a Volkswagen Golf. It boils down to this, the A3 is a competent small car, but it's at a price where more is expected. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments section below and like and subscribe for more videos.